Hi. After the introductory episode, today we are finally gonna start talking about polygon packing method itself. We will examine basic elements first. Specifically, we will talk about three basic creases that represent the foundation of all origami models, regardless of which method we use. They are hinge ridge and axial creases. In this episode we'll talk about the first one, a hinge crease. Okay, we have a square paper divided into small squares, making an 8 by 8 grid. Creasing the paper in this way, using a grid, is not imperative, but we will use it anyway, since a grid such as this makes managing the model considerably easier. After all, dividing a paper into smaller squares allows us to establish the size of the basic unit. Therefore, when we say that a certain flap is 4 units long, we mean that it is in fact 4 squares long. I hope you can follow the reasoning. Now we can begin with our first, very simple example. This base here consists of only 5 flaps. Two are large, each 4 units long. Do you see the number of squares they are made of? 1, 2, 3, and 4. That's why, we said they are 4 units long. Also, we have 3 flaps over here, each 2 units long. The first, the second and the third one. Finally, we have something in between. Can you see it? In the origami world this part here is called a river. The river is a part of a base, but it is not a flap. This part of the paper doesn't belong to any flap. Furthermore, I would like you to notice the width of the base. It is only one unit wide. Do you see it? In the first episode, I've told you that models based on polygon packing method have quite narrow flaps. In this example the flaps are not that narrow, I can agree, but this is because the squares used here are quite large. If squares were smaller, or if for some reason we used a denser grid, like 16 by 16 or something like that, the width of the base would be much smaller. However, let's leave this discussion for later. Let's first unfold the base in order to see the creases, to see the crease pattern. To make it easier, let's pause the footage and enhance the visibility of the creases, just to make them more visible on white paper. Okay, this is much better. Now, do you see the number of creases we have? There's quite a few of them. However, not all of these creases are necessary, the vast majority of them is here only to establish the grid, and does not have to be used at all. So now, which of these creases are real and which are only a part of the grid? In order to answer this question, we have to establish where the flaps are. We have to find out which part of the paper belongs to which flap. To make this easier, let's repeat what we've learned in the previous episode. Every flap is defined by its corresponding circle. If we have five flaps, we should have five circles too. So, let's add the circles. As you can see, we have two large and three small circles exactly the same as the number of flaps. In addition, you can see that the circles are for the most part, out of the paper. Nevertheless, their centers are on the paper, they are on the paper edges. So, everything goes by the rules. Now, I hope you remember, we are talking here about the method called polygon packing, which means we are talking about packing the polygons. In other words, what we really need are polygons, in which the circles are inscribed. So, let's see where the polygons are. Also, take note, polygons in which larger circles are inscribed are next to each other, and they are touching each other. After all, look at the stick figure in the upper right corner of the screen. Larger flaps touch each other. On the other hand, smaller flaps are also next to one another, but they do not touch polygons that define larger flaps. That is logical. Look at the stick figure. Between these two groups of polygons we have something called a river. I hope you remember the term, we've mentioned it earlier in this episode. Do you see which part of the paper the river occupies? Note that the circle is not inscribed into the polygon that defines the river. It doesn't need to be, it's not a flap. It is also very important to remember that in polygon packing method, no paper is left unused. Each and every part of the paper is a part of some polygon. In our case, it is exactly like that. Every part of the paper is a part of either some of the flaps or the river. 
Now, since we have established where polygons are, we can proceed further to define the basic creases. We'll start with hinge creases. A hinge crease, by definition, is a crease or a line that defines a polygon itself by the mere fact that hinge crease surrounds it. So let's take a look at one of the polygons to be sure we understand what we are talking about. This black line that surrounds the polygon is a hinge crease. Do you see it? Now, please pay close attention, this is something I'd like you to remember. Firstly, a hinge crease must be unbroken, and secondly, a flap defining polygon have only one hinge crease. I hope you understand that. So, let's look at hinge creases on the rest of the polygons. This is the second one. You can see that everything is done in accordance with the rules. The hinge crease is unbroken, and there is only one surrounding this polygon. This is also true for the rest of the hinge creases. This is the third one. That is correct too. Then this is the fourth hinge crease and finally this is the fifth one. Both the fourth and the fifth are correct and go by the rules. Now, let's analyze the river. A river is by definition a polygon too. Therefore a river should also be surrounded by a hinge crease. However, there is a difference. A river doesn't have one hinge crease but two. Remember this as a rule. A river, therefore a polygon in which a circle is not inscribed, always has two hinge creases. Here, I would like to underline one more thing, an additional rule. A river must always be unbroken, it cannot appear or disappear in the middle of a paper. The beginning and the end of a river can be only on the paper edges. Technically, this is not completely true. A river can rarely go in circle, therefore not going from one edge to the other, but nevertheless the rule that a river must be unbroken still stands. I hope everything's been more or less clear so far. One more thing. The function of a hinge crease is not only to define a polygon. A hinge crease is also a line around which a flap can rotate. Hence the name. It looks similar to a door hinge. So, let's examine what that means. As you can see one hinge crease is clearly visible. Now, let's slowly fold this flap. Let's fold the flap defined by this hinge crease. You can see what's going on. The whole hinge crease is folding into a single unit line. Do you see it? I'll show it once again. Do you see it now? As you've seen, regardless of the size or the shape of a hinge crease, the hinge crease will always fold into one single unit line. I hope that this is more or less clear. So let's go one step further. Let's fold the base completely, so we will be able to see all hinge creases. Now, it's quite easy to see all the hinge creases. For example, let's take a look at this large flap. These lines are its hinge creases. You can see how the flap can be easily rotated around these lines. We can also examine the hinge creases of yet another flap. For example this one. It also can rotate around its hinge creases. You see how it rotates around these lines quite simple. I hope you're gaining a better understanding of the hinge crease concept. Now I'd like you to pay special attention to the river. That's this part here. You can see that not one, but two creases surround this part of the base. Just like it's supposed to. Of course, just like all hinge creases, these hinge creases that define the river also fold into one unit line. Take a good look. This is the first hinge crease. Do you see how it folds into a single unit line? The same applies to the other hinge crease. It also folds into a single unit line. Do you see how it folds? They always fold into a single unit line. No exception. I hope you understand the idea. It's not that complicated. So, that's about it. We're done for today. In the next episode we'll talk about ridge and axial creases. I hope you are ready.